We're here to solve this split signpost variation by Chris Green called Jigsaw. And the signpost variation is given in the rules above my head right now is that if I have a cell in one of these groups that gets used, I always must form uh, that tetromino shape. So if one cell is an S, it's part of a big overall S. And that doesn't mean it has to go through the region itself, but it does mean we have conflicts. Like if this S came over to the cell, it would cause an issue. And that's because it was part of a T shape. And this is where I think it's really helpful. I didn't do this on paper, which is why this took me much longer on paper uh, when I did this a few weeks ago, is to see that these S's, let's go to red, these T's, and the L's, they're always actually part of that tetromino shape when they're drawn in, which is a cool element of the theme here. They actually give more limitations on cages if you can process all that information together. And, and the cell that I missed that could have saved me five minutes on paper is this cell right here. Like I did not mentally see that this was an L in, in yellow and not a T in red. And so if you don't actually process the color of the cell and like mentally you sort of think, well, maybe this is red, uh, this being a T option still seems credible, but it's not. And so a thing to note is in each of these small regions, we actually can't take anything but the same color cell and white. And there are only three cells here that could be T. There are only two cells could be L. And what, yellow with white could make that work. And so here's a case where this cell, and I'm going to go to green, so I apologize if some of the colorblind in the audience can no longer sort of fully process what I'm showing. This cell, this cell, this cell, or just blinking, these aren't usable because you can't put a T or an L into the space if you fully parse the regions that you're looking at here. So there's for sure an S in this region. This is an S it can be, this is an S it can be, those actually share these two cells. And connectivity in this region is gonna be through one of these two cells. There are other places in the grid we can mark some of that off, like we can't come into the cell, it's gonna be quickly canceled, we can't come into the cell. I can take this L here, but I can't take this cell. This cell isn't part of any valid L that I see. This can also be a T here. This cell can't be used. Um, there can be lots of T's in this grid. This L is okay in this grid. This cell is able to be an L. These can all be part of an L. There's something else we can mark in. So if I come to this helper markings, I'm certainly not coming across these borders that would have two four cells that are part of the same region shape. So another thing we can do in this puzzle is see where we've got these crossings across borders, we can mark some of these cells off. And actually like up here, this T isn't reachable. So we can actually cancel that sooner. But this connection through this L is probably gonna prove to be pretty important as we get a little further in the solve. So let's actually work through the solve. Starting from this lower right corner, as long as you don't miss it like I did on paper. And uh, if you sort of get to here, um, what you'll see is that we have uh, connection that's going to come from this cell or from this cell. And this can certainly reach and touch to this center region. Can this touch to this upper right region if it's not using the center region? Well, it's going to have to come through these cells, which means we'll form an S, and that S is going to mean it's not connected to this cell. It's not able to reach to that cell. And so where we had the, the key constraint that one of these two cells is what's connecting us to the lower right, you should see that we will always be connecting uh, into this orange group, and it'll connect through this cell or this cell into the orange group. And so the I in the center region has to join through this or through this, which means going through the colors we have, every other cell in the space cannot be part of that I. And so we either come across here or we come up vertically here. And if it's that horizontal option, then the only region it can connect to is down here, which is an L. And that L has to connect to this lower right region through an L tetromino into another L tetromino. And these X's we marked mark that as impossible. So the second and probably last key deduction in this grid is that we have this vertical I as how we stay connected. That marks in these cells. It actually means we don't want to come up here because the S doesn't touch to anything that actually works for us. This is a forced T, marks off this cell, puts in this as a forced S. Uh, we now can connect to the top in a few ways. And a thing to see is that we probably still need to get over to the left of the grid because we have a point of disconnection here. So seeing that we're not gonna be joining across this space, we have to get over to the side of the grid through these cells. So I don't wanna use a T, which doesn't re reach over to here, but I don't mind using this shape, which gets us over to that side. And, and before you sort of say, well, I jumped one step too fast. Yes, there is this T up here, but it puts this S and again, it stays disconnected. I have to really get to this 
bottom edge of this region for this to work. And so this coming in as this S is very much forced, puts in this cell, but we don't want to come over to be an S. We come up and form an L. That comes down here as a T, and so this is all good for connectivity. We still have some potential options down here, which we'll work through. Um, if I came through this first cell to be connected there, that is an L. Um, you can't use anything else but uh, this top thing to stay connected, so that L is absolutely forced. That marks off these. Um, if I took this cell, I get another L which touches. If I take this cell, I get another L that touches, so these are bad. So connectivity is through here, and it's not to an L shape. So a uh, few options here, but I don't want to take this cell to be a T, so I take this at least. I don't want to take this for an L, so I make a T, but I don't actually touch the T region of doing it. And so these all look good. Last region has to be connected through this cell only, and that's going to force over through this L. So a bit of a head scratcher if you really can't parse the different letters for these signpost cages. But once you do, there's a key limitation lower right, then you need to have an S that joins through one of these cells, they'll then have to join through the center region, which is a big I, and that forces a connectivity push that gives the whole rest of the grid. So connectivity is the story here. And uh, it's it's subtle, but it's, it's a key property of this variation. So hopefully you got something from seeing this video. And if you do solve in the pen paw style, I think coloring the lits constraint in a bit can be helpful. So I'll take that at least as a tip for the future so that past me that wasted five minutes not seeing the cell wouldn't have that issue. We definitely didn't have that challenge uh, in solving the puzzle here on the video. So thanks, and we'll see you again soon.